you know, it's been a, a crazy night. Have you had a second to just kind of sit with the victories of last night? <laughs> Not <No>. really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, we... Um, the races were called late and some of them were finalized early this morning in terms of the House and Senate, but it really was a historic day. Um, we, you know, the Attorney General, Secretary of State, three ballot initiatives all passed and flipped the House and Senate. And I think it really tells you people in Michigan want leaders who are going to stay focused on fixing problems and, and making their lives better, whether it's educating our kids or upskilling our workforce or landing jobs and it, you know the future economy so that generations of Michiganers can thrive or it's just simply fighting for individual rights and liberties that's what we heard and that's what we'll continue to stay focused on for four more years. What do you get credit for this resounding victory across the board last night? I think the fact that we focused on solving problems as the governor just said we have been all about creating economic opportunity and that means investing in our education system starting in child care all the way through investing in pathways to higher education that are more affordable including the work that we just did a few weeks ago to make college or your college more affordable in michigan and people i think voted for that future and voted for that inclusion that, that inclusive future that has a place for everyone in the economy a place for everyone in our education system and helps people have you know great paying jobs and good careers they can raise families and support families and having that be possible all across michigan i think that's what people voted for you guys now have the opportunity that no Democrat has had since 1984. What do you do with that? Kind of what's the legislative wish list that you guys have? Well, I'll just start with this. You know, we've got the rest of this year to navigate with the current legislature. Uh, we're writing the state budget for next year. We're excited about the prospect of deploying some of those resources we left on the balance sheet to have individualized tutoring for our kids so we can get into a top 10 state for literacy. That's the goal. North Star and all things education right now. And you know, continue to land economic development and create good paying jobs, but also give our seniors a break by repealing the retirement tax. Those would be at the top of the list. I know that Tudor Dixon called you this morning. Can you take me through a little bit of what she shared? Sure. We had a quick conversation. I was grateful for the phone call. She was gracious and conceded and wished us luck. Yeah, awesome. And I wanted to ask, how much do you guys think the MICRC had playing into the victories that we saw last night? For the first time, Michiganers having the chance to weigh in on the political lines we have in the state. Well, I think that it showed that, you know, citizens being able to draw fair districts meant that there was competition all across Michigan. And so um, folks worked really hard in all the races in the legislature. And I think the results you see now is that we have a, a different legislature to work with to make progress for all Michiganders. But all of us, we're committed to the state of Michigan and working for everyone in every community in the state of Michigan. And so we're going to work with everybody who's ready to be at the table of, of, of negotiation and decision making to deliver the economic opportunity, to deliver the education access, to deliver on, on just being able to create great jobs all across Michigan. And we're proud of the partnerships that we have and the Michigan voters are liberty for us. And Trump's statewide endorsed candidates we saw last night losing. What do you think that message sends to Republicans across the state and across the country? I don't know. All I can tell you is that we're so grateful that there were so many Republicans and independents that came out um, publicly and supported us and clearly supported us at the polls, too. And you know, there is a seat for everyone in this administration for the next four years. I can guarantee it. I'll work with anyone who actually wants to solve problems. I think you know having a robust debate around facts is important for our democracy, and I'm hopeful that at some point the Michigan GOP will, will get back to that place so that we can serve the people better. But in the meantime, there's a seat at the table for every person, no matter how you've politically identified over the course of your life, whether you've been engaged or not, uh, there's a seat at the table for you in this administration, and we'll continue to center our work in making every person's life better in this state. We are a governor and lieutenant governor for all of Michigan. We've already seen some Republicans start to cast out on this. We saw that even before the polls closed last night, and we even saw any results. So how do you address that, make sure that all Michiganders are on board with um, your governorship? Well, I think we saw a historic turnout two years ago. It was a full and free and fair election audited over 250 times. This election also was really historic in terms of being a I think well done and giving people the ability to weigh in. We saw young people standing in line for hours, which they shouldn't have to, but we're glad that they did. And I think it shows that when we participate, we get leaders that really reflect the values of the people, and that's that's what it's all about. Mayor Sheldon, victory, uh, Mayor Sheldon Neely is declaring victory on this election. He says that he's looking forward to moving on to a second term in office. Now, we do know that as of right now, publicly, Karen Weaver has not publicly conceded, but he says that he wants to make sure that everyone comes together. So what Neely is saying that he is moving on, wanting to bring people together. Neely 
Just a recap for you, was first elected to office of mayor in November 2015, challenging and winning against Karen Weaver, his opponent again this time. And Neely says his administration has been working to address continued water concerns, crime and other quality of life issues. Now, crime has also been a big concern for Weaver, who told me on Election Day yesterday that she's going to speak up for residents regardless of she's in office or not. Meanwhile, Neely is calling on people to unify. We want to be able to speak to people's hopes and their aspirations and their dreams and work through partnerships. And I'm extending the olive branch to anyone of like thinking that wants to work with this administration to improve the lives of residents in this great city. Michiganders made their decision on abortion rights this election, passing Proposal 3 legalizing abortion and reproductive rights in our state's constitution. While supporters are relieved it has passed, critics, on the other hand, are disappointed. It's an unfortunate reality we're faced with now. Republican Steve Carr, member of the Michigan House of Representatives and a spokesperson for Flint Area Right to Life, says pro-life advocates are saddened with the news of Proposal 3 passing. He says voters were misinformed on the proposal. They made it seem like it was just reaffirming Roe versus Wade and as if it would not allow for partial birth abortions and minors to have abortions without their parents even knowing about it. Other organizations like Reproductive Freedom for All say this is a historic moment. The group hit the ground running in the summer of 2022 to make sure voters voted yes on Proposal 3. This historic victory, both uh, from a local standpoint and a national standpoint, um, this is historic. People said affirmatively they wanted to protect their abortion rights in Michigan. This is about health care. This is about privacy. This is about keeping politicians and government out of people's medical rooms and the decisions that need to be held between a person and their doctor.